All right, so in my last video, I went over how to make um, polygon hair uh, or hair with polygon cards. Uh, and I just thought I would do a quick demo on how to create a quick hair texture um, that you can apply to that right here in Maya. So I, again, I'm gonna use XGen for this. Um, and I'm basically just gonna render out an image of some XGen hair, and then uh, I'll use that as my hair texture. So. I'll start by creating a just a polygon plane and I'm going to come over to uh, generate and go to XGen library and if you go to XGen library you have all sorts of like these preset hair options um, and I think I'm going to use gorilla so just with my hair selected there I'm going to double click gorilla and it's going to want to um, import this into my collection so I can name, um, I can give this a name. I'll just use the defaults for the moment and just hit import because this is just a quick thing I'm doing. I'm not really going to be using it for um, a character or anything. I'm just using it to generate a texture. So um, once I have that in there, what I want to do is come over to, to length and start increasing. I'm just going to increase that length all the way up to a 10. And um, I want to drop the density. And the density is going to be in preview output, I think. Uh, nope, it's in primitives. So density is 200. So I'm going to drop that way down because I want to be able to see through some of that. So maybe something like that would be good. Um, and I can let's see, let's go and give it a little bit of a taper, the hair. Maybe increase the width a little bit. <clears throat> and then if I go over to, let's see, modifiers you'll see that there's a few uh, a couple modifiers already in here because this is basically a, a preset example so um, I have some noise so I can begin to increase some noise and that will kind of offset that a little bit um, and then I have clumping so I can I can manipulate my clumping a little bit here as well And uh, until I have something, something like that, and I do want to make my length a little bit longer. So I'm going to go back over to length and maybe make that like 15 or even 20. And that might be a little too long. Let's go back to 15. I think 15 is a good number. <clears throat> so the tricky thing about this is that if I render it, well, first of all, it's not going to, my hair is going to be kind of cut off. And that's because I need to go over to preview output and under primitive bounds, I need to just click auto set and that will change that to a, a higher number. So then I have my hair there and I can go to my alpha and look at my alpha as well. So let's make a few other quick modifications to this. Um, I'm going to go over to my, let's see, my primitives again. And I have my bend parameters so I can kind of change the way it bends, the amount of bend that it has. Um, I can probably get away with zeroing both of those out um, to get some straight hair. I don't know, I kind of like it having a little bit of bend. Kind of like the way it was before because then Mm 
Let's see. From that angle, it just looks a little bit better. So we can try going to tube shade and see how that looks in our render. It's not too bad. I'm going to so decrease our taper a little bit. I'm going to increase our width. And uh, and drop her density down a little bit more. Just because I want to be able to see through a little bit. So yeah, something like that's pretty good. Um, and from here, what I can do is I'll just delete my plane so I don't have that in there anymore. And I'm going to go to my rendering settings and I'm going to change to the size texture that I want. So um, I want my resolution to be, we'll make this a 512. So 512 by 512. And let's uh, switch over to our resolution gate so we can actually frame that up. fit inside of that texture. You know, I think what I may actually do to get this to fit a little bit better is I may actually stretch this out a little bit in Photoshop. So I'm going to make this a bigger texture than what I need. So let's make this a 1024 by 1024. And we can always change that. Uh, in Photoshop afterwards. So let's see, let's maybe add a little bit more noise. And let's go to clumping and See if we can do anything with that. Clump volumize. I think that's eh, maybe not. Anyway, that's probably good enough what we have there. So now I can just render this. See, we could probably zoom in a little bit more. I'm going to go select my camera. And go down to uh, display options. And I'm going to control click on my overscan just to kind of zoom out. And now I can get that a little bit nice, more nicely. zoomed in. could also try to do this from a um, an orthographic view. That might be a little bit better. You just probably need to uh, go in and change the the uh, bend modifiers so it's bending the way we want it to. Or tilt.
So maybe something a bit, a bit like that. And then, then again, we can go to, this way we don't have any perspective distortion. Um, select our camera, go down to display options, and I'm just gonna control middle mouse click in that option and zoom way out. And then I can zoom way in here and have that go all the way to the bottom of my image. And this way I won't have to bring it into Photoshop, do anything to it. So something like that, and then click render. And uh, since I won't uh, need to bring that into Photoshop, I'm going to uh, decrease my resolution again to 512 by 512. And that should render a lot quicker. Okay, so then I have a hair texture. So if I look at my alpha channel, you'll see that there's an alpha channel in there and they have a texture. So from here, I can just save image and I just want to save it out as, um, you know, in the correct directory here, but I want to save it out as something that I know is going to have an alpha channel. So something like a TIFF um, should work fine. And then I can just go hair, um, We'll say hair underscore color underscore alpha underscore 512. So you always want to put the, you know, whatever the, the um, texture is, what map it is, if it's color or specularity. Um, in this case, we can probably use our uh, color um, or our alpha channel for that matter for specularity too. Um, and then the texture size. That way I can look at the name and know exactly what that texture is for. And just click Save. So now we can open up our elf character. And the hair, I'm going to apply, um, we'll apply a new blend to the hair. And for color, I can go to File and uh, apply our hair texture, which is going to be in our Images folder. Elf Project, Images, Hair. And uh, by default, that's going to um, it's going to plug right into there. Um, you do have this weird sort of shininess happening, and that's because um, if we look at our blend, we basically Maya went ahead and recognized that there was an alpha channel there, and automatically applied our alpha channel to our transparency map in our blend, as well as our color. But we also have a specularity or reflection, and basically that's happening across the entire plane instead of just where the hair is. So what I can do is um, I can go to my specular color or my reflectivity for that matter and apply my alpha channel. So if I jump over to my hypershade and uh, have a lot of nodes there that I don't need. So I'm going to go to delete uh, unused nodes and get rid of those guys. And go to my hair texture and map that. And I can come over to my file here and under out alpha. I'm going to plug that into let me zoom in a little bit there. I can plug that into specular color, or I can plug that into reflectivity. And 
and that may only uh, show up in render and not the viewport. So let's check. Oh, it shows up there too. So let's try plugging that into specular color instead of a reflectivity. So I'll break that connection and um, we'll go out alpha. Uh, doesn't won't, won't let me do that. Let's try eccentricity. And that gives us something strange. So let's break that connection. Let's see. Let's try specular roll off. roll off Let's see if that works yes so now we only have uh, reflectivity in the hair area even though our viewport isn't really displaying it properly um, or for the moment we can just kill all of our reflectivity so now my character has polygon hair. Ideally what I'd want to do, especially if he has black hair, is in the actual texture, the character texture on his head, I'm going to have like a hair texture on there as well. So you don't see that weird um, sort of like doll hair, balding type thing. Um, another thing I can do is on a face level here, I can increase um, the size, I can increase the size of those. Uh, before I do that though, I want to select all of my faces and, uh, and go to, um, go to my scale tool and, uh, change the or axis orientation to, um, the component or normal maybe. No, it doesn't seem to be working. Scale center object. Nope. Hmm. Um, maybe we, we would probably need to do, that, to do that before we combine them together. So I can go to um, select those guys. Go to mesh separate and then modify center pivot for all of those guys and change that to object there we go just deselect our scalp making that a little bit bigger. We'll make it show up a little bit thicker. The hair will be a little thicker. Just like I said, you may want to go in at this point and individually uh, move these guys to where they're in the head. And again, you'd probably want to have a, um, a texture underneath that. So it doesn't look so so weird in those areas but um, overall it doesn't look too bad it would look better you know when I get uh, that sort of hair textured on the actual scalp